Stephen stared at the ceiling of his room and thought, as he did every morning, about simply not getting out of bed. He could stay here until the end of the world, looking at the plaster ceiling and the long, dark wooden beams, while the square of light from the window crawled down the wall and across the floor and faded away to nothing. As he did every morning, he prodded the space in his soul where there had once been glory. There was only silence. There would never be anything there again. And then, as he also did every morning, he swung his legs over the side of the bed and got up. Grace was lost to him, but he still had duty, and duty would carry him forward. The temple of the white rat was quiet at this hour, or as quiet as it ever got. In an hour or two it would be a beehive of activity, filled with clerks and clerics moving back and forth, hundreds of people solving small practical problems, and occasionally even the large intractable ones. The rat's priests fixed things that could be fixed, and when things were broken past all mending, they helped people pick up the pieces. There was no mending seven paladins whose god had died, and who had shattered themselves to further pieces in the carnage that followed. Still, the rat had taken them in, broken as they were. Both the dreaming god and forge god had offered, but the rat priests had been the ones who ushered them inside, still bloody from the wounds they had taken and inflicted in return. Even now Stephen did not know if he should be grateful for that kindness. He did not think that he could bear to stand beside the paladins of living gods and be eaten alive with envy for what they had. But at least in the house of those warrior gods, there would have been someone able to stop us. The white rat claimed no paladins. He was served by law clerks and healers and diplomats, not by steel. Stephen often felt as if he was a dog in a henyard, a protector who might turn feral, and the gods knew how much damage he might cause before he was brought down. The rat's servants were not fools. They had seen the damage the saint of steel's chosen wreaked in the aftermath of the god's death, and they had faced it unflinching. The temple set aside a wing for the broken paladins and asked nothing in return. As soon as they could rise from their beds, one by one, the remaining paladins had asked to be allowed to serve, 